Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today for Frugal Friday, I have a watercolor tip for you. And um, this is a tip for when you have a tube of paint that really is not working for you. Um, maybe you like something about the color, but not everything. So I have this tube of Potter's Pink from Renaissance. It was one of the first tubes I've tried of this of the tube line. I really like the pan paints, which I have in here. They re-wet really well, super vibrant, um, great lay down. There's no glossiness to the lay down. Um, and then April, my friend who has a little creative shop on Etsy, brought in the tubes and asked me if I wanted to try some. And I decided to try Ultramarine Blue, Potter's Pink, and Sap Green. And I love the Ultramarine Blue and the Sap Green. And I never used Potter's Pink before, so I really, um, I really didn't have anything to compare it with. And uh, so I put some in a pan. I found it kind of difficult to re-wet, but if I put some water on it, it would re-wet. Um, so I did a swatch of the first pan I, I had poured when I first got it. And I love the texture of it, but the color is really soft. And um, I was looking at some swatches of Potter's Pink for some, from some other brands that um, somebody had swatched out. And I really liked that their Potter's Pink was a little bit more vibrant. Now this is a single pigment, PR233, but it's very, um, it's just very muted. And Potter's Pink is not a vibrant color, but when I was seeing some of those other swatches that had more burgundy undertones, I was like, geez, I really would like one that's a little bit more robust. And um, so I decided I would kind of tweak it a bit. So I took the rest of it, because I had two tubes of this. So I, um, I ended up squeezing some out and adding touches of Mars Violet, which really overtook the mix and a little bit of permanent rose and a little bit and I used some core Quinn Magenta because that was the only pink core watercolor I had and I wanted it to flow a little bit better um and so even just little touches of those other colors I ended up making this color here and when I got to the bottom of this tube because I did stick a pin in there and tried to stir it up because I thought well maybe this is really light because um maybe the pigment settled and I'm not getting it all mixed up because when I would swatch it out, sometimes I would get like a shiny, um, a shiny quality to it with like too much binder. And I know that binder separation is a big problem with um, really heavily granulating colors. So I tried stirring it up with a pin, still seemed the same. But then when I did get to the bottom of the tube, I did seem to get a little bit of a darker tone. And so I swatched out the paint that came up from the bottom of the tube. It really didn't look that much different when I, when I compared them all swatched out and dry. So... By mixing in some Mars Violet, which is PR 101, but it's more granulating than like a than like an English red, uh, add a little bit of the Core Quinacridone Magenta just for a rosy hue, and I added some Permanent Rose because I thought that Permanent Rose undertone I really, really like that. So I made this into a still granulating color, but it's got a little bit more of a punch. Now the I, I kind of regret adding in the um, the quinacridone magenta because I think that even though it did help the flow a bit and help the rewettability, um, I think that because that color stains, it fills in all the space around the granulation so it do you don't see as much of the granulation there. Hopefully if I put my hand there you can kind of see the texture there. So when you had just the potter's pink against the white of the paper as it broke apart, you see a little bit better granulation. And that was re-wet dry from the pan, so actually um, I kind of like that. Uh, but anyways, I just did some little paintings with it. Um, just a just an easy little rose there, and uh, and I really like how it came out. Um, I'm not going to do that to the second tube. I'm going to leave that one plain just for refilling my um, you know single pigment mixing a granulating color here. But I thought that was kind of an interesting thing for you to do if you're if you got some paint you're really not happy with it and it's not working for you. Um, try mixing some other colors in to give you the quality you want. And I never really would have considered this except for the fact that. Um, after the recent Daniel Smith hullabaloo where they had been adding some uh, tra some other more traditional vibrant pigments to their Primatex to kind of goose the color a little bit, I then realized, I found out that most paint manufacturers do that. Like for colors like Viridian that can be a little weak, they add some phthalo green to it. Uh, so it's kind of a common practice even though it's not disclosed on paint labels. So I figured, well, why can't I do that? with a paint that I'm not happy with. Um, by doing that, it did reduce any of the glare that I, like the, the glossiness I would get from like the binder being a little bit too heavy um, around the edges. I'm not getting any of that there now. Um, and I've got a little bit more of an intense color. So might be something you wanna consider if you have a problematic color. And one other tip I wanna share, because you probably make a lot of swatches like this when you are, um, 
when you are making, you know, when you're doing your custom colors. So I recommend taking a die cut, if you have a die cut or a punch or something, and just kind of cutting out shapes that you can use or cutting them into bookmarks, things like that. So you can actually use your, uh, your test pieces for other things. So there you go, a couple tips in one. This right here, oh my gosh, if you look at that, the end of the tube of the Potter's Pink, I had such a crazy, um, crazy granulating, uh, it's like a lot of the pigment had kind of settled in there, and I loved that, but sadly that was just a small amount at the bottom of the, um, of the tube. But anyway, it was really fun to play with this. I'm not sure if I would do this with, with many other colors, but if you got one that you're just not going to use otherwise, here you can kind of see the example of that shiny. Can you see that? How oh, it's kind of shiny there. I don't know if it's showing up on camera. Um, that was something I was frustrated with, so I wanted to eliminate that. I wanted a little bit more intense color, so that's what I did, and I hope that will kind of give you some um, license to play with your supplies and make them so they will work for you a little bit more. And of course, practice with ways to get the best granulation, like adding more water. Uh, maybe if it's if it seems like it's settling out too evenly, add some more water, stir it up a bit, and then maybe dab it, dab paint here and there, see if you can get it to break up a little bit more. But um, but it's fun. I like that it's a little unpredictable, and uh, I just want you to use your supplies more. So hope you found this frugal Friday tip helpful. And until next time, happy crafting.